Hey guys, Steve Bull here. Today I got another game in the Oklahoma for you. This time we have the offense of Commander Sims, and it's going to be more of a defensive game as opposed to last time when we saw Lee, the more defensive commander, it was more of an offensive game. So this one, we're going to be kind of focusing on how to deal with the destroyers as a battleship player. There's also some good uh, ideas to think about when we're talking about battleship positioning. So I think this will be a good game for anyone who's trying to up their battleship game. Uh, note right off the bat here, we're spawning on Solemn Islands now. We got eight ships per side, two battleships, and both of the battleships happen to be spawned on top of each other over here, which is suboptimal. Ideally, we'd like one battleship on the eastern flank, one on the west. Uh, the core bay could conceivably think about going over there, but to come around that island, it would probably take three, four minutes, and it would guarantee almost certainly that there's going to be an overload on this side, which would result in one of the sides of the map effectively being conceded. So I wouldn't recommend that, but I'm hoping what he's going to do is just continue forward on the map, and then I'm going to pull to the northwest as long as I can, trying to create just as much space as possible. So you can see on the map there were about a quarter of a square away from each other to spawn, which isn't great, but I'm going to do my best here. Now when we're doing this, look off in the distance, you can see that's where their red ships are probably spawning out there. We don't know what's out there. We know they got two battleships and some cruisers and potentially a destroyer. But those battleships are what we're worried about in this moment. So if we get spotted and we can see the plane coming in, so we know we're going to be spotted momentarily. And there we do. The minute we do, we begin turning in as hard as we can here until we get a good read on these battleship positions because we don't want some surprise salvo coming in, whacking us in the sides uh, and really doing a number on our health right off the bat. So... That's, once again, you can see on the map now, we got about a half a square, maybe two-thirds of a square of separation. So, a little bit better. We're still going to be trying to pull to the northwest whenever we can safely do it. See the Nevada shot there right off the bat. We go ahead and take a shot at the Iwaki. Now, I could consider turning off right here. And uh, we almost whacked the Iwaki there, but uh, because that Nevada's on his reload, and it's a really long reload like ours, probably should have tried to turn off here. Um, but anyway... We just, once again, want to continue to get further and further away from our battleship. It's just going to give us a bigger advantage over here. Another ship pops up here, Doogie. So now we know for a fact that the destroyer is not here. We can see something that's capturing B, unspotted. And it's almost certain that it's not over here because they're not capturing C at this point in time until this Iwaki moves in there. So those are the clues we're looking for there. So we're not worried about torpedoes necessarily. And... Uh, Trying to double te or uh, double strike this Iwaki and the Doogie, but we missed the Iwaki, so that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, yeah, the Doogie can do some damage if we're broadside. French cruisers, their AP doesn't really matter. The distance, if they're aiming it properly, they can actually do quite a bit of damage, but not as much damage as that Nevada. The Nevada is the ship that he pulls the trigger. If he aims the shot and he gets a little bit lucky, then we get whacked. So we got to be angling against him, and you can see on the map we're pretty steeply angled on him. Maybe he could tighten it up even just a smidge more. Uh, but Doogie's sitting on the cap there. He's pointing at us, so we're probably not going to land a lot of shells, but I figured we got pretty close distance. I might as well pull the trigger. We got him pretty good there. Uh, so he's getting low. And then, at this point in time, I should be thinking to myself, uh, where do we need to be going next? Okay, we're, we still got a ways to go against that Nevada, but we've killed the Ubari. This Doogie over here is low. We could kill him with the next pull of the trigger. Um, so we got to be keeping an eye on what's going on here. So red, they're still kind of in their spawn. They haven't committed to going to the southeast or through the mid yet. Those are kind of the two options. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. American Battleship players in particular, but Battleship players in general. You should always be keeping an eye on the flow of the battle because you can see we're going north here. Uh, so if we suddenly sink this thing, it's going to take us a minute, minute and a half to turn around and start going to the other way so we're primarily trying to attack this nevada first and foremost i'm turning in again here which was a risky play but note the nevada had the battleship the blue battleship between us they're actively fighting each other he's lower health he wants to be removing these guns so the odds of him even noticing me make the turn in the background are low but then once again uh even if he did notice it he should prefer to kill the core bay to the left there because He's lower, he's closer. Both of those things elevate the priority of when we're trying to decide which battleship to shoot. You want to be taking the battleships off, so prioritize the ones with low health and the ones that are closer to you. Become more accurate, become more dangerous. So 
that's why I'm not really that concerned about angling against him uh, that well. But we do turn in now. You can see we've already noticed that we're going to be winning the side. Uh, we got ships that are committing to capturing the base, so we don't have to worry about that. And now we can see red is pushing to the west. Okay, now that's a mistake because they're down two caps. They're actually only down one ship at this point in time, so the game is certainly winnable, but not if we're going to sit back and let the other team have two caps to one for the majority of the game. I mean, we got both of the middle cap and this cap over here pretty quickly, and uh, yeah, they got red, but potentially if their team's going to follow us over here, uh, we could flip that cap over there. Now, if you're looking on the map, you can probably tell why they're coming over here, and this is part of the reason I'm trending more to the south because I'm committing to this. Because I see what they're doing. They're chasing the carrier, of course. They must have got a whiff of him. And, or maybe they got some clues that he's over here. But they're starting to think to themselves, oh, yeah, I get to shoot a carrier. Once again, they should be all in unison attacking that middle cap. Um, but they're going for the carrier. But note what I'm not going to do here. I would never want to go all the way south and begin going around this island, okay? Because what happens if I do that and they go into A, the middle cap? Well, then it's ring around the rosy for the rest of the game, and I don't pull the trigger for the rest of the game, okay? So we got the two-cap advantage. We need to defend that. That's my goal here. I'm also trying to defend this uh, crew or the carrier, who I know they're attacking, and eventually the destroyer is going to come for them. But primarily at this point in time, we want to be defending those two caps, and rather than committing to going all the way around the island and potentially losing my ability to defend either of them, if they get through the middle, flip that cap, and then go into C, while I'm down south doing God knows what, that's a disaster. So we're defending here. We need to stay in this region. So we're not going to leave between B and C to the southwest of it, okay? So basically, you can draw one or two square uh, diam diameter or circle or whatever it's called around our uh, position at this point in time. That's where we're going to be for the rest of the match unless something goes awry. But now we get spotted here. That's a key moment. As the battleship player, you get spotted. Look on the map. What's spotting me? There's nothing with a line of sight that's worth spotting. And that means it's almost certain. The Actually, it is certain in this case because all the ships are currently spotted. So we know for a fact that the destroyer is over here. But even if we didn't have all the ships spotted on the enemy team, you got to still assume, okay, it's destroyer time. So we're trying to stay relatively close to this Rhine, I think it is, the carrier. Uh, we want to try and pinch off the ability for him to sneak up the western side of the map um, without us noting, noticing that. So we're getting pretty close to this carrier, okay? But that's going to prevent him from kind of sneaking up here and getting on the sides of us without us knowing. What the carrier needs to be doing at this point in time is recognizing there's one thing keeping me alive. And if you don't know what the kamikaze is, which is the destroyer on the enemy team, it shoots six torpedoes every 41 seconds with a great concealment. So it's extremely dangerous. One of the most dangerous torpedo boats at the tier, certainly at the tier. It's what, probably the best ship at the tier. And it is one of the best torpedo boats in the game. So we're going to be constantly changing direction here, maybe fiddling with the speed from time to time, launching this plane. Keep an eye on the plane. What we're going to be doing with that is launching the plane to detect torpedoes. Uh, so we're going to be kind of just roughly, I'm not watching the clock if you're a god tier player you'd probably be watching the clock trying to time the reload okay we saw those torps 40 seconds ago uh, let's keep an eye on it roughly 40 seconds they'll be coming in again you could be doing that but basically be aware that the torps are going to be coming at a pretty consistent pace your direction so of course when we are under attack by the destroyer we're turned away from them uh, that's to make it harder for us to be torped if we're moving away from them the torps have to travel a longer time that gives us more time to randomly turn and miss them or potentially fizzle out so it's a lot harder for torpedoes uh, to torpedo a ship that's moving away from you and we're essentially kiting at this point in time trying to slow him down we're also trying to once again protect this carrier but we're watching the developments on the far side of the map we're flipping that cap and they only have two ships left one of them is under the torpedo attack by the planes um so all we have to do basically is, even if me and the carrier die at this point in time, they're still going to have a real hard time uh, winning this game, as long as I can kill that battleship. Here you can see our plane spots this kamikaze. We were in the process of flipping over to the HE, uh, since we noted that the battleship wasn't continuing over here, uh, or at least it didn't appear to be at the moment. 
And we shoot him once with the back guns and we got lucky. We knocked out one of the torpedo launchers. So we've been saying he's been launching six torps. He's got three launchers of two each. Uh, we knocked out one of those for the rest of the game. And when it's blackened like that, that's permanently disabled. So we've removed one third of the torpedo power of that ship. So now we're a little bit more bold here. We got him in the smoke here. I'm taking a calculated risk here by trying to rush this smoke. Uh, what I don't want to do is have that thing spot me, so I got to be careful if I'm shooting here. Um, but if he continue, if the battleship continues to move to the west, then this basically this destroyer can permanently spot me, and I can have a lot of trouble here because uh, I can't angle against the torpedoes and that battleship. So as soon as we recognize that the Kamikaze looks like he's leaving the smoke here, and the Wyoming is coming over here, once we confirm the Wyoming's uh, coming here, then we need to leave. Once again, we need to begin to sail away from these guys. So momentarily, we were pressing that smoke, seeing if we could ru rush him and potentially pressure uh, this Wyoming. But once the Wyoming comes over here and then they're kind of essentially playing two-on-one against me, then we need to turn away from them again. So the Wyoming will spot me. The torps could come from the smoke. You can see there's some there. Uh, so that's why we've been in a, basically a full turn uh, for the last little bit here. Get some fire, some uh, HE shots off that guy. That's fine if we can set him on fire there. That's good. We'll cycle his damage con. Maybe help that uh, cruiser behind them. Or, you know, if the guys get a flood on them, both of those could be big time damage for him. Uh, but we're also going to keep the HE. Well, we switch it out now. I thought we were maybe going to keep the HE. But we switched it out there because, once again, all we have to really do at this point in time is sink the Wyoming. That'll be a 100 point swing. We'll be up just shy of the. Uh, thousand you need will be at about 940 or whatever it was and then by having all three caps here we got it in the bag so basically we were trying to push that destroyer when able to and that's basically when he cut off his own line of sight we want to continue to get closer to him and then when we recognize that we could no longer do that then we pulled off okay so you got to be very flexible in your thinking when you're trying to deal with these destroyers but basically you know where i want to be positioning i want to close in with that wyoming help these guys gang up on him take him down like we did there and then continue to stay away from this destroyer so anytime i couldn't push safely into the destroyer then we turned away uh, tried to slow him down you can see how far those torps are spotted when the plane's out there that's how helpful that fighter plane is so that's how i traditionally always use the fighter plane and tell the carriers but keep in mind if you're in these situations that is a valuable counter torpedo tool as well so you can see here the game is just about able to wrap up. Not a huge barn burner in terms of damage, but I thought it was pretty good in terms of both strategy, positioning, and how to deal with these destroyers. I think we played it pretty well. Didn't have taken too much damage from them and kept them off the carrier, which was what he was trying to do, and kept them off the caps, which is what he should have been trying to do is flip C or A. So anyway, that's kind of my thoughts on that topic for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. We got lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you, and we'll see y'all later. Peace.